How's it going guys? Joey from Bishop Gaming and today we're going to be looking a little bit more into Sharks and Reptides as we are getting close to finishing all the text-based stuff that goes into it. Um, Jay's going to have the spell book done by Wednesday and I finished up pretty much everything that has to do with text besides like a spell roundup, which I need the spell book for in order to do. Um, this way I know like anything that he did not get that was already in the text or whatever it may be. Um, so I figured I would show you a little bit behind the scenes today, um, like an actual behind the scenes, not just like something that like we had premiered and stuff like that, um, but like what it looks like on the text base, because I, mean, I know you guys haven't seen a lot of that, I know you guys have been itching a little bit more for more Sharks and Riptide stuff, I know there's a few of you who are really, really hyped about it, we are hyped about it, so let's get hype! Um, with that said, uh, so let's take a look into it. Nah, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. All right. So first things first. This is the actual like sharks and reptiles narrative. Um, let me uh, just move this over so it fits the crop a little bit better. Um, we're gonna do like an actual reading of this story. Uh, this is actually an excerpt. If you see, it says right here, um, checking and banking episode ex one sharks and reptiles. Um, checking and banking is a story that I'm working on. Um, it's kind of like a little bit of a text to anime which um, revolves around three people who work in a bank who have a really peculiar boss. It kind of spoils the story a little bit because you guys can already see it. this is EX Episode 1, which takes place after Season 1 of Checking a Bank King. Um, but the boss is a little bit peculiar, and I have the first episode if you guys ever want to read that. Um, maybe I'll make, like, a deviant art or something like that, but just know there is some language in here. Um, <clears throat> then we have the official Sharks and, Rule, the Sharks and Reptiles rule guide which we have showed already um, and stuff like that then we have like the dice rolling and all that now here's where we get into it so you get the change log I see yesterday I added in um, space goat half space goat complete space goat has been revealed to you the way space goat's gonna work is I'm gonna choose two locations in our dungeon for Jay where space goat's gonna be Jay's gonna choose two locations for Kelly where Space Goat's going to be, and Kelly's going to choose two locations in the map where Space Goat's going to be for me. This way, if we land on that position, we'll never know. The only person who's going to know if we find our secret boss, Scape, uh, Space Goat, um, like, Jay will know if Kelly lands on it, Kelly will know if I land on it, and I will know if Jay lands on it. So we'll never actually know where it is in the map. We'll only know where it is for one other player. Um... So you see we've been doing extensive work. A lot of it is like week on week. We had a little bit of a gap here. Actually, not really. Um, we got to fix that. Uh, like an 11-day gap. And that's because we had a little bit of an issue. Um, I worked on it. And then Jay worked on it simultaneously. And it kind of overlaid each other. So we had to go back and um, fix what we had lost. Um, a little bit of setbacks, but we did fix it. We're going through just here. Um, added some stuff. You know, you guys know Emperor Penguin. Uh, Popo -po Amor is going to be in space. BCRE done on the 17th of December. That was super hype. Um, class breakdown. So, getting more into it. Um, as you see, this project really started on November 30th. Um, it started before then. We just started typing it up on November 30th. Um, so here's like how stats are decided. We already have these videos up for you guys. Um, well, not up, but they're coming soon. Um, the videos of our class choosing. So you'll actually get uh, um, the classes and stuff um, and our stats um, coming soon. You'll get to see them a little bit here. These are just going through like all of our class possibilities, you got your shark sniper, you got your barnacle bard, you got your penguin paladin, your tuna thief, your wizard, uh, whale, whaley wizard, and then you get uh, your crabby cleric. Um, so it's pretty cool stuff. And then this is what we're going to get into in the videos where we actually decide our stats. Um, it was pretty funny. Um, so five likes on this and I'll release Kelly's and then I'll release Jay's and then I'll release mine. Um, mine had a little bit of an issue because we recorded it and then the recording got corrupted and I had to re-record it and uh yeah your boy didn't do so good now here um we have a little bit of an issue here it's actually something that we lost and Jay is reworking um you see like these are our formulas so um I'll probably end up yeah let me space this out a little bit so it's a little bit easier to read um 
sorry about that. Just doing some work as I'm actually doing it, so it's pretty cool. It's kind of like an improv um, working on it. So you get like your physical form, which is going to be like player strength plus weapon or skill power, and then a die roll minus enemy defense, enemy armor if they have any, and die roll. Um, and for magic, it's pretty much the same thing. Um, so it's pretty cool. We have like our dice dealies. Uh, I don't think we're actually going to incorporate these too much. Um, we kind of have these here as like a placeholder, um, but we haven't really figured out a way to work them in correctly. Um, <clears throat> so we might actually just scrap this idea. Um, then we have like our weapon details, which is our weapon proficiency. Every player will have a chance to get up to level 10 proficiency, um, which I'm going to work on doing the EXP as well as this. So basically what your level proficiency is with a certain weapon, like say you're using swords and you have a level seven proficiency, um, you roll a die and you take the higher result only. Um, so level seven, you roll a 10 sided die and that's gonna be what you get for this die roll. Um, so that's how that adds, adds in. You get your four sided die, that's gonna be your die roll. Um, so it's pretty cool. Um, then we get into like all of our different weapons. Now there was actually a late scrap to this. Like, I mean like very late, like as I was working on um, this and I'm seeing something now that I actually do need to fix as well. Um, scepters were originally gonna be for clerics and wizards, but when I was doing it, I was really, really leaning towards wizards and I wasn't doing much for clerics. Um, so I switched this out. This was originally shields and pavises. Um, but I switched it out into chimes, and chimes are very cleric based. Um, so shields are actually added into a full armor thing, and we'll break that down in just a second as well. Um, then we get like our weapon notes. Um, this is what I need to change here because pavises are obviously not um, part of the weapons anymore. Um, but all swords, axes, clubs, and shorts can be dual wielded with the exception of the two handed variants. Um, shields can only be equipped in offhand, um, when, especially when you're not wielding. Uh, dual wielding or using two-handed, don't mind this. Uh, scepters cannot be dual wielded and must be in a dominant hand and can be used in combination with any single hand weapon or shield, i.e. Um, scepter and sword or scepter and knuckle. Um, a weapon comes in three tiers with tier one for the weakest and tier three for strongest. Now it actually comes in four tiers, it's a little bit of a secret, um, with legendary being the strongest. So we have some of our weapons here, um, squishy foam swords, just like a parry doesn't really do anything, um, just makes a funny squeak noise. Um, and we, you know, just keep moving on, keep moving on. You get squishy foam sword with nails, a little bit stronger. Causes bleed damage, which is pretty cool. Um, <clears throat> so how heavy is this thing? Um, so yeah, we, we did a lot of like research and stuff. we added in like stuff that we like, like example, like Garudamon, which is like Digimon. Um, sword made of the hardest steel, which is kind of stupid. Sawfish, like the whole fish, it's actually like a sawfish. Uh, if you look, it has like some funny stuff to it here as well. Um, you need to have the fishing rod inventory. Um, now, funny fact is, there's actually no way of getting the fishing rod right now. Um, it's a secret item that I have to add in still. Um, this is kind of like why I'm doing this right now, because one, it gives me a chance to relook at it, and also a chance to like show you guys. So I need to like go back and add some stuff into like our item decks. Um, but yeah, the fishing rod. Uh, maybe I'll add a thing of like non-weapon weapons, like a weapon tier that's not like a weapon, but you can equip it still, like an umbrella, shit like that. Pretty funny. Um, so we still got time to work on this. I need to fix this because it's it's bothering me. Oh. Um, so yeah, for this one, like you roll a 20 side die, if you roll an even number above 10, you get bitten and take 5 damage, plus bleed for 3 turns, enemy takes no damage. If odd below 10, enemy is bitten and takes 5 extra damage and bleed for 3 turns, so it's kind of cool. You got like the Trevor sword, um, now this is the Trevor two-handed, um, it's cursed, and cannot be, a, cannot be a, unequipped without sacrificing 75% of your maximum health, um, while equipped, you must use Tre Trevor's voice until the curse is cured must equip the moment acquired. So if you get this sword, one, it's not very good. Two, you must talk like Trevor the entire time. Um, then you get like the bar, because you know, we don't just set the bar, we are our bar, and like far too heavy to be useful. Um, God dang, Joe, what the hell were you doing when you were typing this and you kept putting DI? Um, 
So you get like a Hino Kagasuchi, which is a, a katana, which is actually um, Hino Kagasuchi is my one of my favorite monsters from Puzzle and Dragons. You get the Onion Maker. You get the cliche Skywalker name because it's a saber. You get your Phoenix Mon. Um, now you get like your Legend Sword is like the best sword ever, but it has a lot of requirements to use, and it's really not all that good. Um, so and I, I see like. It's funny because like this one's even better and it is it's like very strong um legendary sword here not very strong but the thing is it does absolute damage so it's like pretty good um then you get ume blossom which is the katana um proficiency five um has a lot of good stuff and we're getting into our poles here um dual point a lot of stuff now i didn't make like the same amount of weapons per tier for every item so it's pretty cool it's kind of just like as soon as i lost like an inspiration i um was like all right we're gonna move on to the next tier and i get like your bread and butter which is a spear you 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 get it do you get it bread and butter and it's a spear it's because bread and butter is a pickle and it's a spear of bread never mind <sighs> then you get crow um you get halliburton now halliburton is a reference to me because i spent four years of my life studying in the Halliburton Hall at Queen's College. Um, Halliburton is actually a really famous anthropologist, and for those of you who know, I was an anthropology major. Um, and I studied anthropology throughout college. Um, roll six I died, even attack again, 50% damage, is pretty cool. Um, and you get Igniter, um, all these have like special effects. I kind of stopped doing the curse thing, and I don't know why I did. A <laughs> strawberry spears forever, um, it's cool. And then you get a pull-up fiction. I like that one a lot because pulp fiction. Get it. You get Condor, you get Ogre's Grotto. Ogre's Grotto is actually um Final Fantasy IX, Old Wisconsin, um you get Sedet. Now I actually was like doing a lot of research here on like powerful demons when I was doing this because I wanted to have a cursed fear. Then you get your Crescentia, um, which is one of the legendary poles. Um you get your Lamaya, which is actually Fuck you. Um, uh, the God Bird from Dragon Quest. And then you get Calcifer, which is actually the fire demon from uh, Howl's Moving Castle. Um, that's why he has like Howling Inferno and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, this is like what I'm talking about. You see how like, there's spells here? Um, these aren't actually part of the spell book. So these are actually like weapon skills. He's, it's going to go here. Oh, uh, I don't want to yet. I'll show you at the end because if I do that, I'll lose position in this. And it's a little bit annoying. So we're just gonna speed up a little bit. Um, you get like your two-handed axe, you get throwing axes, you get um, you get battle axes, which are two-handed. Um, you get warlord, you become become the dragon, which is really cool. Um, that actually has an upgraded form later on. Um, you get Kongle, which is actually a reference to um, Legend of the Dragoon. You get Dragonic Aura, which is actually a reference to Fire Emblem. Fire Emblem. It's also a, re 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 a reference to Fire Emblem. We have the warlord. It, um, it's kind of just cool. And Legend of the Earth and Dragoon, which is obviously um, Legend of Dragoon again. And then you get your Apocalypse, which is actually a really strong axe in general. He's actually um, pretty strong in game. Um, yeah, so like, this axe allows two full turns, move and attack. It's really, really brutally strong. Um, then we get like your hammers and clubs. And I try to make the legendaries like absurdly powerful because the chances of you getting them and having like the stuff to actually use them, um, it, it's gonna take a while. You're not really gonna be able to use it early on. You get tree trunk, which is just a club, um, a quarry and hammer. Um, and I want like the hammers and axes to be a little bit stronger than normal. Now yin and yang is real cool. Um, this actually has a little bit later on. Uh, can I have a shield, attack twice, first does 30 extra light damage, second does 30 extra dark, um, then you got the Tower of Babel, which actually references Kid Icarus, um, the Hammer Man, um, you get Azura Sky, which is a club, and it causes 80 water damage, which is a ton, and you get like your legendary hammers, which is like the Popopo Hammer, you get your Godga, you get your uh, Yagurush and Ayonum, um, which is actually legendary hammers used um, by gods, I forget which god it is, oh, it's actually... You know, Russian eye armor. Um, just kidding, guys. Um, then you get like 
for your bows, you get the bamboozle, which is reference to Splatoon 2, which is like, well, Splatoon in general with the bamboozler. You get twigs and string, you get short bow, you get bronze. Um, you get like your finch, you get ivory bow, then you get a fast fire, bamboozler MK2, you get quick and easy. Um, yeah, man, all smoky, which is reference to all farsi. Apparently, mithril is not a real word. Uh, fleet of foot um, can move two spaces after attacking. Um, so a lot of it. Now I'm gonna keep it Atalanta. It meant to be Atlanta, but I like Atalanta actually. So look at that little typo. Then you get like your flygon, which is a reference to me because I've always named my flygon Bo, and I don't know why. I don't know where it started or where it came from, but I always name them Bo. So this is my flygon. Um, and then it's pretty good. Like I really, really love the way that the bows came out. Um, and then you get like Zero Dawn, which is Horizon Zero Dawn reference, and you get your Apollo. Which is um, just a short bow because Apollo is a sun god and he used a bow. Um, man, I need to space that out. Sometimes when, like, when you copy and paste, it comes a little bit weird. Um, yeah, so you can always equip two short range weapons. You may mix and match any of these. So you can use like a dagger and knuckles or knuckles and daggers or um, anything else like that. Steak knife. God, I cut my hand with it. Do you guys remember when I stabbed myself in the hand with the steak knife? And I was playing Minecraft and I got blood all over it. the Wii U gamepad. Um, so I don't see anything here so far. Hard Knuckle, there's the first one, um, which is a reference to um, Mega Man. And you must yell at Hard Knuckle every time you attack where you deal zero damage. Uh, punch Out, reference to Punch Out. Um, now, Slash and Bash, um, which is a reference to... Um, the Backstab Gang, a.k.a. Uh, Slash and Dash, a.k.a. Robin and Little Mac, who was mine and Jay's team in Smash Bros. Um, back when we were one of the best teams on the planet. Um, obviously, we have gone way out of whack because we haven't played in a long time, but we used to be one of the better Smash Bros. double teams. Um, we used to be Slash and Dash. Or the Backstab Gang, which is also BSG. Um... So you get Hand of Despair, which is actually a reference to um, Dragon Quest. You get your Feather Duster, which is actually a reference to our deer. Um, you get Fangs of Father, which is a re reference to Inuyasha. Fist of the Beast King, which is actually a reference to Digimon. Your Fender and Cerberus are actually references to a story that Jay and I wrote a long time ago. Um, it was a really dumb story. It was really, really dumb. Um, and you get your Rose Gold Kitty Cats, which is a reference to Kelly, um, because she has like this pink cat brass knuckle um then moving on to scepters if you guys have any questions or you want to see more of like a certain weapon just let me know in a comment down below i'll be happy to do it so then like scepter seal like, everything is really like wizardy um you get a taint the scepter which can cast poison drain I add a quotation mark there um this is the best way to edit because like i'm showing you guys and i'm also just like having a chill edit oliver is actually um a reference to nina cooney wind tunnel is actually a reference to uh Inuyasha. um dark miasma is just dark miasma um flash step is actually a reference to dragon ball super or dragon ball z or dragon ball in general um shiver rod um and you get shadar which actually references nina cooney again um you get natural selection which is just a cool name. Then you Monkey King Wukong, which is just another cool name. Hacker's Core, Porygon Z, obviously a reference to Pokemon. Uh, you got Eglifus, you got Yggdrasil, you got Scepter of Change, which is another Easter egg for a Dragon Quest. So then you got your Chimes, which Cat Collar is just fucking funny. <laughs> um, there's some references here too. Fang Necklace, um, Chiming In is actually a reference to Chingling. Um, then you get your Ling. So this chiming angling, get it? And Rainmaker, actually a reference to, uh, um, well, not only just uh, Splatoon, but also a wrestler named Okada. Um, I was watching, I was watching Kenny Omega versus Okada when I was making this, so that's why I came. Wings of Mercy, which is an Easter egg to Fire Emblem. Um, Timberwolf Attention, Dragon Quest, Chimeco is actually Chimeco, uh, <laughs> Meteora Bangle. Um, you get Disciple Charm, which is Dark Souls. Um, Wings of Avalon, which is uh, just a better version of Wings of Mercy, which is... Um, ow, just scraped myself on the keyboard. 
Um, what is Avalon? Just a better version. I just like the word Avalon for Ding Dong Dell, Sky Shrew on a Primordial Sword. All of these are references to uh, um, Nino Kuni, but this thing is fucking good. Yeah, Terra's defense, Terra's demise, Magical Breach, and Chakra Explosion are so good. Um, they are all really, really good skills, and they get you Fist of Purry. Um, then you get into your armors, and these are pretty funny. Um, and they're. <laughs> I'm not even going to talk about it. Well, let me just see how it goes. <laughs> yeah, kite and armor. <laughs> I'm not going to explain the Speedos. But if you guys want to know, 10 likes, I'll explain the Speedos. Um, Songbird's Vest is a reference to um, uh, Bioshock. <laughs> um, Robin Hood, Robin's Hood, which is a reference to one Robin Hood and also Dragon Quest. Uh, Veil of Tides is a cool name. And here, Robin Hoodie, which is just better. Um, Robin Hood. Then you get like, old diving suit. Then you get <laughs> Speedo. <laughs> Stone Gold. These armors are really cool, I, I think. Um, it's a shame that right now none of us are paladins because they're really cool. Then you get Starry Knight. Um, then you get the Veil of Ancient, High Dragon Investment. Um, then you get legendaries, which I made a few legendaries for this. So there's one for every class, and there's a few for just like general. Um, so Adamant Tortoise, which is Adamantoise, which is Final Fantasy. Uh, Sacred Cowl, which is Fire Emblem Heroes, March of the Unicorn, Veil of the Penguin, Phoenix Vest, Pear Dragon Robe, which is reference to uh, something J related, God's Laugh's Gift, which is. <sighs> then you get your Riptide. Now you notice Riptide's really fucking strong. And the restores max HP and MP. Well, you have to be max level to equip it. Um, and like the fourth guardian, which is a reference to Space Goat, which is really strong. And you can only equip it after defeating a strong hidden entity, which is Space Goat. And you get your shields here. This is where you get like Pavis's. Pavis's actually have like an attack stat as well. And you can't equip other weapons because there are two hand shields. Um, and you know, just get into them. Now, there's actually only two legendaries here. Um, because there's one for shield, round, and one for pavises. You get gargoyle in here, your walls of heaven. Um, then we get into our spell book. I'll probably wrap it up after the spell book and then do a part two. So here you're looking at like some of like the glyphs um, and how it's gonna work out. So essentially, like this is the user. This is where the first wall of attack is. But if you expend, um, if you see here, like you expend a little bit more MP, you would actually move it. Um, <coughs> so. That's how that's gonna work. Um, just gonna scroll through this real quick. Uh, Great Worms Flame. Then you're into our water spells. You caucus, get Royal Flush. You get Right as Rain. You get Great Fairy's Fountain, which is a reference to Nino Kuni. You get Great Big Wave. Scalding Torrent and the Riptide, and that's it. Um, so next time we will get into the bestiary, as you say, beaten up orc. I want to take time to go through the bestiary because there's a lot of funny stuff in there. Um, that I think you guys will enjoy. But thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. As I just happen to scroll through a beaten up orc. <laughs> yeah, is he is he beaten up or or what? See you guys next time. Bye, everybody.